Attorney General blaming it for a national youth mental health crisis. The response here? Pretty muted. And that has upset health researcher Dr Samantha Marsh. She says social media should be treated just like another addictive substance, perhaps tobacco. She joins me now. Tanakwe, thanks for your time. Uh, many studies have revealed that social media impacts negatively on our mental health. Why is the Surgeon General's one so different? Yeah, so usually in the media and stuff, we will see a report and it will be about an individual study or maybe they'll get an academic or a psychologist to discuss the topic. And you get one little um, part of the, you know, piece of the puzzle. Mm. But what's unique about this is they looked at, um, I mean, it wasn't a systematic review, but they looked at comprehensively the literature in this area and they balanced the, um, the harms and the, 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 the benefits of right, social so media. Right, so it's really solid research. Yes. It's all-encompassing. Yeah. And it came out with the conclusion that it's a mental health crisis driven by social media. Yeah, so there's a little bit of good, mm -hmm. but on the whole, there's you know a raft of evidence now saying that this is really negative impacting our kids in a variety of ways. And you say we should really be paying attention to this, but when it landed here, not much attention at all. No, and it's difficult to, to know why that happened. Um, what I can say is that in New Zealand, in the media, often um, we have this very balanced approach. So a study will come out showing that social media has this negative impact, mm. and that is always countered by somebody saying, yes, but there's these benefits, and so we need to, you know, kind of balance it. And yep. when, you know, I think that's a flawed argument now, because we have enough evidence to say that this is really harming our kids. Okay. In terms of the way that we <clears throat> deal with social media, do you think that within the home, you know, as parents looking after their kids, parents have been sluggish because it's just easier to go with it? Yeah, I mean, when you're receiving the message time and time again, you know, it's a narrative in New Zealand that it's all about balance, mm. then, you know, you're going to take the path of least resistance. Yeah. Um, and that is the path... Because there is a lot of resistance when you try and take a device away. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. But, you know... We have more evidence now, we have more knowledge, yep. and we have good knowledge. We should be using that to help our kids, yep. and I think we've reached that point where we need to do something. Okay. In terms of that knowledge, you point to a study in an article you wrote recently about the way that social media use at the age of 9 and 10 can change brain structure, mm -hmm. uh, and that's noticed now a couple of years later. Yep. What, how is it changing the brain structure, and is that brain structure similar to say, addiction in somebody? Yeah, so this is quite a new area of research that we're actually beginning to see that it's changing the structure of our, brain, of our kids' brains. And so in that particular study, they took 9 to 10-year-olds, they looked at how much um, screen time they were using, and then they followed them two, two years later, mm. and they looked at changes in their brain. And mm. they saw a pattern of um, change in the brain that was similar to what you would see with somebody who starts drinking alcohol at a young age, mm. which is quite significant. And not only that, that structural change in the brain um, explains some of the um, impacts we were seeing on anxiety and things like that, right. increased anxiety. So it began to ex explain some of the things that research was suggesting was happening. Right, but in a physical change in yeah. the brain structure. It's, social media is integrated into our daily habits. Um, two hours, 15 a day is the average for the key, apparently. So what should we do to minimise that? Yeah, it's, I mean, things can happen at different levels. So, you know, we've got the policy levels. So... For starters, we need to invest in research in this area in New Zealand. It's not on the agenda at the moment. But um, don't we have enough research from overseas already? Yes, we've got enough research to show that it's negatively impacting our kids. Um, I think we need research to show what can we do to help families, what can we do to help schools and everybody to, to support our kids, mm. what, what works, because we don't really know that. Do you have any suggestions as to what would work? Um, I would suggest my first, you know, First cap off the rank would be get rid of smartphones out of schools. You know, right. they shouldn't be in there. These are powerful little computers that are designed to be highly addictive and we're putting them into the hands of our kids and sending them to school yeah. and expecting school to be more interesting than, you know, than social that, media and gaming that, and things. And which an app has been designed to do all about continuing engagement. Yeah. So you're fighting against that. Um, but there are, I mean, you've talked about benefits, right? Mm -hmm. So there are benefits for, say, some 
minority groups who find a sense of connection yeah. and a sense of community. So you can't take these things away totally, can you? Well, there's, you know, there, there are those benefits. Very, you know, you have to balance it up, right? And, I mean, you could say there's benefits to smoking. You could say that with smoking helps keep your weight down, helps relax you, you know, that breathing in and right, out. So helps on the balance of benefits, you, you would argue. You know, you have yeah. to look at it. And um, we're talking about developing brains here. Yeah. You know, this is a critical time of adolescent brain development, you know, for these quite small benefits for a very small, and, and also those are, those are benefits, but th that same group are also being exposed to more um, harmful content as well. Right. You know, so again, even within that benefit, there's a. So there's, two, there's two things there. There's the, the structural change in the brain and the exposure to content at the same time. Yeah. Uh, okay. but there's also the fact that those activities, spending a lot of time online, um, gaming, uh, social media, is taken away from the things that we know children need mm -hmm. in order to make that developmental leap into adulthood. So, what could the government do? I mean, you know, one suggestion if you follow, say, the tobacco argument is like, you know, place a health warning on any social media use or something like that. I mean, what could the government do? Well, you know, you would want to question how well those warnings work. Mm -hmm. um, Are you saying they don't? Um, they need to be, you know, I mean, it's a good place to start, you know, for parents to see that, but whether that will change the behaviour or not, it's, mm. it's difficult to know. It has to be a whole raft of things right. um, that would need to happen to support that. And know. getting the social media companies on board to, like, share data about, you know, who they're targeting and how, how broad it is mm. so you can analyse that, that's quite a hard task, a hard ask. It, it's a hard ask. Um, again, you could go back to tobacco companies, you know, and... How did that work for them? How, you know, how did that benefit yeah. us? But I guess on the other side is, what does the future look like if we carry on the way we are? What's the future going to look like for our rangatahi? Um, again, it's a hard question to answer. Mm. Um, I can't predict the future, but you know, we can look to the research that is there now. And we can also look back and look at what, uh, how our children were before this time. And they were fine. You know, we don't need social media and access to always, you know, always being online, always being connected. We don't need that to thrive. Right. Um, you know, and what, what do we want for our kids? I mean, I think every parent should be asking themselves, really, why does my kid need social media? OK. You know? We'll leave that question out there. Thank you so much for your time, Dr Samantha Marsh. Thank you. All right, uh, we asked all the health spokespeople for, of all five parties currently in Parliament about what they plan to do in this area. First up, Axe Brooke Van Velden said parents are responsible for their children's upbringing and should set good examples. Labor's Aisha Verrill said social media platforms offer connection and that social media isn't inherently good or bad, it's just a tool. Ricardo Menendez March says the Greens are interested in exploring the recommendations in the Surgeon General's report as well as measures to give children greater safety and independence in their neighbourhoods so they can spend more time in their, with their real life peers. Uh, National's Matt Ducey says his party would establish a standalone mental health minister and Departi Māori's Debbie Narewa Paka would like better digital education in schools and a solution led by rangatahi themselves.